Hey guys, what's going on? Coming at you with a Wednesday morning video. So I haven't made a video in a while. I went on vacation for two weeks and uh, just got back and swing swinging things in work. So it's been a wild time trying to really catch back up, but I'm gonna start making videos uh, regularly again. So I wanted to capture this title. Obviously, if you do the market, you probably were all, you know, the past two months basically were leading up into CPI. So we were really concerned about the August reading in CPI. Obviously, energy, uh, oils, and really rent too uh, were all really sky high uh, the spring and summer, causing inflation to go out of control. So there was a lot of expectations that CPI would be lower than the month than July's report. We haven't had two negative months in a row of CPI. If you ask for my honest opinion, if I was trading, which I don't do, I'm a long-term investor. If I was trading the market. Honestly, I probably would have thought that CPI was going to go down significantly, way more than analyst expectations, just because the uh, crude oil and, and you know all that stuff is well below ninety dollars a barrel basically all August when the month prior it was sitting around like one hundred five to one hundred fifteen. That is a big weight in uh, CPI, so I thought, oh, for sure it's going to be a high seven most likely. But thank God I don't trade; I'm a long term investor, and I would have been highly you know, mistaken and wrong. So I would probably have lost all my money trading, which is why I don't do that. Uh, so I'm gonna go over my game plan, CPI, my thoughts, um, and kind of what I bought yesterday, uh, right before close actually. So August CPI came in at 8.3%. So that is higher than expectation. Expectation for it was 8.1%. So it missed by technically 0.2. The July CPI uh, was 8.1%. Two. So we literally went up 0.1% from last month. So we inverted again and uh, we are going up in inflation. So I think my opinion that we hit peak inflation now, I can't see it continuing. I think oil is going to continue to drop now that summer's over. We're going into fall. P people are spending less money. If people spend less money, there's less of a chance inflation keeps going. Uh, when there's less demand for things, supply gets back in control. When supply gets back in control, prices get back in control, and they kind of all level out, reset, correlate, all, you know, just, just basically have a healthy market. So the past year has been really healthy for the market, in my opinion. Obviously, in 2021, the market was just like, just the S&P PE was like in the 20s, and, uh, you know, small caps, SPACs, and, and uh, IPO companies, they were... They were all insanely overvalued and basically if they had a compelling business model with no fundamentals or any proven cash flow, they would just go to the moon. So that's an unhealthy market. It has to reset. So you're getting a very, the longer this draws out, the healthier the reset's going. So you have to remember that in this kind of market. If you're a long-term investor, you should be dying for these opportunities because they don't come by much. So as far as CPI, I think it will be less than 8.3 next month for the reading. That's just my opinion. Obviously, the Fed speaks next week about uh, the uh, the Fed speaks about uh, interest rates. So I think they're going to go 75 basis points. That's just my opinion. Uh, most of the market thinks that too. Some people are saying 1%, but I don't see that. Uh, they'll just probably stick the course because that gives the, the Federal Reserve, it looks like they know what they're doing. So they can't just keep changing courses on the fly. So it looks like you don't know what you're doing then. So that probably 75 point basis, like, which is fine. That's good. Uh, I did buy Meta. I bought Meta right at close at 153.06. My cost base is 176.12. The crazy thing is I was buying Meta in 2019 around $200, 190, 200. I was buying this in 2021 around 225, 215. And then I actually doubled my position. My position was fully built out in 2020. Uh, I did not buy anything in 2021 in Meta. Um, it ran up to like $350 or close to it. I did not take any profits, but now I doubled down my positions. That's a top three position of mine in my portfolio right now. And my cost base is 176.12. So if you, uh, you know, they have a very good, you know, balance sheet, tons of cash. Uh, people forget like they own WhatsApp, Instagram, Facebook. They're going to capture people in you know other countries, and there's still a lot of room to grow there. Advertising is going to be huge for companies to maintain, you know, to gain growth and to keep getting their name out there. And Facebook or Meta is really the best, one of the best platforms to get uh, advertisement out. So people forget about that. People are all focused on the metaverse. Like, yeah, that's just the cherry on top, in my opinion, which I think will work in time. It's just a couple of years out, so people just can't see it right now. So love that stock. Bought that 10% of my position. I bought uh, yesterday. NVIDIA was another one. 
This one is actually at 52 week lows. Uh, it's almost pre pandemic lows, I believe, or close, not close, but right before it really blew up. It's at 52 week lows. Uh, I bought today at one yesterday at 131.84. That's 10% of my position. Love Nvidia for the future. I, you know anything with innovation, AI, metaverse, uh, even like crypto and stuff like that. I mean chips are very important to that stuff. And obviously we know you know technology drives growth. Nvidia is the top dog in that industry by a landslide in my opinion. So love this stock for the long term. Shopify. This is one that it's basically a mini Amazon. Obviously. Uh, I'm in the business to business, uh, like that's what I do for a living. Basically, I'm in business to business. Uh, a lot of people use Shopify. They love their stores. They're very plug in. Uh, it's for small, medium sized businesses. They keep renewing their subscription. Shopify is going to have a lot of buying power as they get bigger and better. They're just going to keep raising their subscription raises, and then people are going to get used to it and like it, and then they're going to be stuck. So, love this business model. I think there's massive potential. This stock, you know, a couple like a year ago was, uh, it was, uh, what was it? It was like over, it was over a thousand dollars at one point, which is sort of crazy. So, um, unless they did a share split, which they might've did, but anyways, they definitely did. But anyways, it's down like 70% from high. So bought 10% of that one. Love that one too. Would like to make this one a top five. These are all top 10. I currently hold 17 stocks. So they're all, uh, those are the three I bought yesterday. So I'm out here. Okay. So yeah, so these are the three I bought. In my opinion, all great buys right now. Dow had a bad, bad, bad day. It 3.9% a day, it lost over a thousand points. Uh, that's one of the Dow's worst days, I think since like 2020. Uh, I think it was in June, I believe from what I read. So um, very bad day. I wish it was green, it'd be ridiculous, but just gives you buying opportunity. So you can't really lose if you have a long-term mentality. If things go down, things reset, buy more of your favorite stocks for a cheaper stock. One day we'll probably have a green day like this. I don't know when it will be, but you'll be like, wow, I just made a bunch of money. So that's kind of the mindset you need. So yeah, Dow got hammered. S&P was down 4.3%. NASDAQ was down 5.1%. The whole market got hammered. My portfolio actually did better than the S&P and the NASDAQ. Uh, it was only down 4.14%. So the reason I think that is because I do have a uh, probably a quarter of my uh, portfolio in small caps, I would say. and. You know, obviously Wall Street doesn't really dive into small caps as much. They want to see um, a profitable business. They want to see revenue. They want to see a clear direction of where it's going before they start running in these small cap companies. So obviously Wall Street isn't much. Retail investors are mainly in them. So that basically is telling me that retail isn't really selling. If, if anything, they're buying. And uh, that's why, in my opinion, I think my portfolio did better than the S&P and the NASDAQ because that kind of propped mine up a little bit. But yeah, 4% down is really bad. I lost a lot of money yesterday, but that's okay. So yeah, Wall Street, uh, you know, basically when the CFAT report, I really think most of Wall Street, if you listen to like CNBC or a lot of the analysts, they really thought we were gonna have another negative CPI report from the month prior. Like I'd say eight out of 10 people that came on CNBC throughout the last month said this was the big day. It's going to be less than we're going to. It's it's going to show the Fed that they can lay off the gas a little bit. People were getting a little optimistic, and I really think just the fact that it missed by 0 0.2, which is like nothing if you really think about the grand scheme of things, it's still high as crap. It's still eight um, percent. Wall Street just deflated their balloon and just basically panic sold. There's algos. They wanted to get out and uh, all that. So it's kind of just funny. They're 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 very quarter Wall Street's very quarterly. Um, they're very emotional because you know they have to. Um, show to their clients that they're making the money or they're doing outperforming the market. So they try getting in and out to save themselves some money, which is a really bad way of investing in, in my opinion, but most people can't handle the volatility. So it's kind of like, it's, it's silly if you think about it, but you really should be buying in times like this when big red days, you should be a buyer. So I haven't bought stocks in over a week until today and until yesterday. So days like this, I will continue to buy. If it drops like this tomorrow, I'll buy some more. Um, I'll make a video on what I bought. So yeah, that's kind of my plan. You know, I'm just going to be continuing a buyer. Um, I'm not selling anything. I will continue to buy my favorite stocks for um, a discount. And I think, oh, you know, in the next like year or two, you'll be thanking yourself. You're like, man, I wish I could go back in 2022, like right around the summer, fall. There were such good opportunities for stocks. They were stupid cheap, way under, way uh, undervalued, and uh, things are going to bounce back. And you're going to wish you could go back in time. So that's my opinion. I'm trying to get a thousand subs by the end of this month. If you guys hit the subscribe button, it's much appreciated. Till tomorrow, peace.